A victim of a child abuse scandal in Islington Children's Homes in North London is to sue a leading Labour politician for negligence. Margaret Hodge, now Labour MP for Barking, was leader of Islington Council, which was severely criticised for abuse in its care homes. It's believed to be the first time such action has been taken against an elected official and comes in the wake of two other civil cases against local authorities. Our social affairs correspondent Tanya Sillam investigates claims that abuse in Islington's care system continues to this day and assesses the wider implications of the issue. For a couple of years in the early 80s, a young boy lived on the edge of Highbury Fields in North London. His care had been entrusted to Islington Council, but in this children's home he was regularly abused. There were nights when you didn't know whether you was going to sleep alone or whether some big man would actually come into your bed. Um, the fear was just not knowing, not knowing what was going to happen that night and not knowing what was going to take place, but knowing that something wrong was going to happen, that something that you personally would feel ashamed about was going to take place. Demetrius Greg Panton was 10 when his father placed him in voluntary care. He was abused for the next three years by two different care workers. One received a three-month suspended sentence, as these confidential records show. But despite his letters to the council throughout the 80s, it had been 10 years before a major inquiry was launched. There was no investigation. There was no, there was no sense that there was lessons to be learned. And that's probably the biggest horror of this situation. If they'd listened to me when I'd raised the issues of concerns in the 80s, then many young people in the care system, in the Islington care system, would not have had to face the awful events that I had to face during my time in care. It wouldn't be until 1995 that an inquiry revealed the extent of abuse in Islington children's homes and reported the allegations Demetrius Panton had been making for 10 years. 32 children's staff were accused of abusing an unknown number of children. Now Director of Social Services in Hertfordshire, the author of the report has criticised Islington Council for failing to investigate the allegations at the time. If this was a widespread problem, then a substantial number of children might have been saved. We were told that children's homes were in an appalling state, that children were at risk or are being abused, that staff were abusing them, the physical state of the buildings were very poor, and so on. And if that was true, the management should have known, the council should have known, and they should have taken a lot of direct action to do something about it and put it right. Uh, uh, Michael Fitch probably. might have at least been spared the last few years of abuse he suffered throughout the 80s in another Islington home. I was sexually assaulted, I was, um, I was actually threatened to be buried alive if I told anybody at all. And he actually dug a nine foot hole straight down, not long away, and he said he'd bury me head first, alive, if I told. Where Michael Fitch has mutilated himself in anger, Demetrius Panton is demanding an acknowledgement of what they suffered. Now a chief policy advisor in another Labour-controlled London borough, he's the first to launch a civil action against the council. He agreed to show us another home in which he was abused. That was my room, and there were three boys in that room. And that was the other room, there were three boys in that room. And that was what the public saw of one hour street. Channel 4 News has seen documents which show that some senior politicians in Islington must have known about allegations of abuse in their children's homes by 1988. This was at least five years before they were fully and finally acknowledged by the council. Someone doesn't want the truth to come out. It seems as if um, members of Islington Council were incredibly scared running incredibly scared as to what was actually happening in the social services department. And if I saw those documents, now as an adult, my initial reaction would be, heads have to roll. Margaret Hodge in the pink, then leader of Islington Council, and now a leading figure in New Labour, is the first elected official from Islington to face a writ for negligence. She declined to be interviewed for Channel 4 News, as did her then political advisor, Stephen Twigg, now Labour candidate for Enfield. 
who'd been told of the abuse by mid-1992. Councillor Mike Deveni, then chair of Islington Social Services, had also been alerted by 1988. What was going on in the late 80s in Islington were substantial political changes about how they wanted to deliver the services that distracted managers from the day-to-day -day management of services. They took their eye off the ball. The Islington investigation was one of ten major nationwide inquiries and two in Clwyd and Warrington have yet to be concluded. So the case against this local authority will have profound consequences for those hoping to seek damages elsewhere. The threat of legal action in Islington also comes as victims of Frank Beck await judgment in their case against Leicestershire County Council. All will test local authority immunity following a House of Lords ruling last year. In the meantime, Islington is working tirelessly to satisfy child protection procedures. Do you have full confidence in all the staff you employ in children's homes? I think I'd be a complete fool to say that there is not the likelihood of there never being a complaint about children, uh, somebody who works in one of our children's homes. All I can say is that we have very robust procedures for first of all vetting the staff that work in our children's homes and secondly if they in fact uh, prove not to be suitable for dealing with them. But at least one Islington care worker who didn't want to be identified alleges abuse has continued to take place. just feel that um, Islington still hasn't got their act together. They're trying, but I still think that there's lots of work need to be done. And uh, I think there are some culprits still, still um, working within the borough. Children's rights are now on trial in Islington as those elected by their parents face calls for accountability. It's a test case, if not a major issue, with profound implications for children elsewhere. Our social affairs correspondent, Tanya Sillam, now look again at tonight's headline.